Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man 4. So we've got two Robot Masters down, and I'm trying to decide <laughs> which I'm gonna go after next. But I decide I'm going to work through one of the more frustrating ones first, Bright Man. I mean, I mean, Marley, they're the same thing. If you go and see the light, you're technically dead, right? You would know you're a dead man. Ooh! <laughs> the callback. Gonna need some burn heal for that one. <laughs> uh, he can do that. He needs to be revived. That's because I'm not too bright! <laughs> bright Man stage, when I first played Mega Man 4, I naively decided to start with this stage. I'm gonna recommend, first and foremost, not only for the stage, but also for the boss, don't do it. I can agree, because this was one of my first as well, and it sucks. Bright Man is quite possibly one of the worst first choices, and if you don't come to his stage with his weapon, with his weakness, sorry, and you're not the best at avoiding damage, it's gonna be a hard time. But I'd be lying if I said the stage theme didn't make it an enjoyable romp all the same, because I've been through this level and died in this level enough to remember the music very solidly. I mean, honestly, the music is probably the best part, because the rest of the stage is just super difficult compared to a lot of the other bosses' stages. Whoever decided to include this in the, in the, um, in the Game Gear Mega Man game was a safest thing. Yeah! Yeah, because, hey, you remember that stage in the NES version? How about a worse version? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, man. Now, the fun thing is a lot of the alternate paths this level gives you, if you can work out the puzzles, it gives you good practice for the rest of the level, especially with the swinging platforms. It just sucks because this is actually really difficult if you script the timing, and later on they're going to do that on purpose for you because you're going to have this with enemies to avoid while trying to make these tight jumps. Ugh. Exactly. Why? But it means you can get an E tank early on, which is going to be a godsend later on, especially if you like me at the. T <laughs> Brush, where are you going? <laughs> I must go, my planet set needs me. Especially like me, if at the time you recorded this, you hadn't played the game in a couple of years, um, and could not for the life of you remember how things work. There's Mega Man 4, I love it, but the last time I had played it, before I started recording this, I started recording this before I actually got the Legacy Collection, and I've now finished it owning the Legacy Collection for Classic and X, so uh, that really sets a timestamp on things. And in these initial levels, it really shows. <laughs> but the runs were good all the same. Did you get a chance to play the Zero Legacy Collection? Well, yeah. I've already got the Zero Collection on DS, and oh, okay. ZX so and ZX really... Advent aren't too hard to find, so I'm thinking I might still get the Zero Collection if it goes on sale, but I technically already got it, so... That's true. <laughs> now this! This is where the level gets ridiculous. I hate this section. This section sucks. You can barely see, and there's tight jumps, and there's enemies flying in the corners. It sucks so much. And they shoot projectiles that stay on the screen. And again, the red ones are the ones that stop the lights, the green ones are the ones that bring them back on. Hilariously, if you go into the boss room though with the lights off, they do go back on when you go through, which I do like. Yeah, because you, you, you kind of need to see what you're doing to fight the boss, or at least that kind. Now, for one of the two worst robot masters in this game, Bright Man. And that's because when his health hits certain points, only then will he use his Robot Master weapon. And when he does, it gets problematic very fast. I actually found out it is dependent on where his health is. Yeah, and it's nice when I see with this version because the health meter actually has an extra notch on it to say when it's hitting a quarter. So for this fight, that makes it even more predictable because every quarter is when Bright Man uses his uh, weapon against Mega Man. Man, that's so cheap. Yeah, it's actually a really good weapon when you get to use it, but it's really bad when you have to fight Bright Man using it. Absolutely. And like, that's the thing is, I could go with paying attention to the health bar to work out when his triggers are for using the Flash Stopper, but unfortunately, 
That requires such multitasking that my brain can't process all at the same time. So I instead focus on doing the damage to him and just survive. He is not a robot master, I could do a perfect one. I've seen it done, and props to the people who have that skill and were able to pick up on the correlation of his health bar and his weapon. But my goodness. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the harder ones in the whole classic series to do a perfect run on because of just how he can stop you midair and then you're kind of screwed until he hits you because you can't move until he hits you. And now I'm green with envy. <laughs> now Look, you're... Ma, I'm puke. I'm puke green. Oh, God. Look, Ma, I'm a more effective version of a toad man. <laughs> <laughs> I actually attack. <laughs> I'll give you that one, sir. But yeah, now that we've got Flash Stopper, we have a means to make the other most annoying Robot Master in this game more manageable. But I'm going to be saving him for one of the last few that I do. <sighs> Anyone who's played this game before will know exactly who I'm talking about. Smart decision, because it is kind of a rough boss. But next up... We're going after Skullman. And I gotta be honest, the first time I heard his music, I thought I was playing a fighting game. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense since it is Capcom. Oh my gosh. That, that's not right. Alright, speaking of fighting games. <laughs> Wrong game. Sorry, the cart got a little tilted. I found the secret game inside of it. It's a multi-cart. I've gotta be honest, the first time I played Skullman's stage in Complete Works, I'm just like, okay, am I playing Mega Man or am I playing a Dragon Ball Z fighting game from the Budo 10 series? Because it genuinely reminds me of Piccolo's fighting theme in that game. And I just, I couldn't unhear it. I couldn't unhear it. So I just had to. I mean, it was on the PlayStation as well. I mean, this makes a lot of sense from Capcom. They, I swear, a lot of their stuff usually references back to fighting games because that's their bread and butter. And these are our Sniper Joe analogs for Mega Man 4. The Skeleton Joes. They got a... <laughs> they got a real bone to pick with Mega Man. Uh, this playthrough is going to be filled with room shots, isn't it? Isn't it always? Always. <laughs> hey, could you think of a drier pun? No, I just did. Uh... I don't think. I think no body could have possibly. I don't know. Marley, don't. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> These puns are terrible. Sorry. <laughs> At least not in you windows. Very true. But yeah, Skullman's stage isn't too difficult in the opening area. And the other good thing... Yeah, the opening is just your, your standard fare. Yeah, the other good thing about Eddie is that if he gives you a power-up you don't want, you can just scroll him off-screen and then just come back for the other one. But yeah, it, this works for every game. I want to get a life. I'm sure Skullman does as well. <laughs> yeah, because he's like me. He's dead. <laughs> Uh, now this path here, I don't have to take it, because again it is a side path, but it means I can get another A-Tank, and right now that is a good thing to be grabbing onto. Yeah, I mean early on it's best to get as many E-Tanks as you can for the winter stuff, just to make it a little bit easier. Yeah, like, the E-Tank uh, deposits are nowhere near as generous as they are in Mega Man 3. But Mega Man 4's difficulty in certain points makes the number of E-Tanks you're presented with worthwhile to take advantage of. And some of them are put in some pretty dangerous spots, like that one. Yeah. But if you take the time to go for them, it's pretty rewarding at the end of the day. I think the worst part about that E-Tank in particular is just how the enemies can respawn after a while for just off-screening them. And these jumps are super tight, so if something respawns in the wrong spot, you're just kind of screwed. Yeah, absolutely. Pixel perfect timing for these sections is really crucial, and getting in is the easy part. Getting out is the tricky bit, especially. Yeah, because this stupid guy at the top. Oh, poop. That's this is what I was saying. Like the fact that if certain enemies respawn, which is kind of a guarantee with how this respawning system works, it's going to be a lot harder to get back. Absolutely. Not really the platform gets the enemies out of the problem. But it means we've got more time to listen to the music, so I mean, at least... every time I die, I'm just like, 
Yeah, at least you also keep the E-Tank. Exactly. Exactly. It, it's not like Mighty Number no. 9, where if you die, you lose your E-Tank, because that was a good decision. Who thought of that again? <laughs> They'd already worked out the perfect way for the system in Mega Man 4, so why in Mega Man 8 they took E-Tanks away, I will never understand. And I'm glad they came back to 9, because it was so much better that way. <laughs> I mean, you have your great abilities you can buy in the shop, like climbing ladders faster, you know, instead of just making that natural moveset thing. True. Now we've just got to deal with spiked tellies and the, uh, the skeleton Joes. At least these guys aren't as bad as actual, like, sniper Joes from other Mega Mans, because they don't rapid fire at you. Pretty much. They're a lot slower with their attacks. Now, let's go take on this bonehead. And because Dust Crusher is his weakness, it's going to ideally make timing things a little bit easier. Now, Skellman doesn't move until you attack. <laughs> Which was a fun thing to learn. And he is the barrier user of this game. So, he shoots, he jumps, yeah. he makes his barrier, he runs at you, lather, rinse, repeat. His pattern is pretty easy to learn, the only thing that consistently changes is how long he holds the barrier for, and if you stop him too short and try and jump over him before he gets to you. But otherwise... Isn't that a color? Skullman is actually not too bad if you can dodge the shots well. Isn't uh, the Skullman weapon uh, one of the shield weapons that Mega Man can use in and smash is color palette swap i well i think for like smash 4 in particular yeah because of the custom moves yes because it was it was leaf shield skull barrier and and uh plant barrier skull barrier like yeah and then they made the smart decision and got rid of all those for ultimate thank god I mean, aesthetically, they were pleasing, and I feel like Mega Man got the short end of the stick with that, because the level of variation you had in different versions of we Robot Master weapons just made me happy. Oh yeah, I mean, I agree aesthetically. Functionally, the custom move system was one of the worst things they ever did to the series, because it was a hassle to work with, no one liked it competitively, the fact they unlocked randomly and you could get duplicates, it was just a cluster. Terrible mess of a moveset. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But yeah, by this point, every Robot Master I'm going after now is in the weakness order after I beat Bright Man. So... Skull Barrier is the weakness of Dive Man, and he's the next one we're going after. Now, this stage is a real s sinker. <laughs> I, I mean... You're actually not wrong because of something later that's here that I'm assuming you're going for, yes, Marley. very true. <laughs> yeah, because that part sucks. Very true. So, Dive Man's stage is probably, other than uh, Bubble Man's stage in Mega Man 2, is like the first proper water stage we've had in a while. Especially now that we've got Rush Marine, and I actually really in enjoy this level. It's pretty frustrating on your first trek, and the main reason for that is these guys. Yeah, the, the whales here are kind of a pain. The whale mini-bosses. They drop little mortars, they suck you in when doing so, and they shoot massive homing rockets at you that have tons of health, and are much easier to dodge if you can do it correctly. My gosh. Thankfully, I have a submarine. Yeah, it's much better in this game compared to its introduction in 3. It's easier to control here, and it actually has use. Yeah. Hey, Eddie, what have you got for me? Oh, death. Good to know. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> what a nice gift. Let's try that again. Okay, fine, I'll take the health. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of the worst Eddies in this game because he, uh, he's not in a good spot. Could have put him somewhere better. Like, maybe here. Yeah, but, like, could you imagine him running past an enemy and just being like, here's some health, I'm welcome to die. Well, I mean, yeah, he's giving you something you're gonna need. Oh, death. <laughs> like we said. I mean, I always need some death in my diet. 
So now we're mixing in stingrays with the octopuses, which is always fun. Especially in this section here where I just go, not nah, tanking it. Now we have another whale! A whale of a good time! Indeed! Oh boy. And I nearly slid. The worst part about those torpedoes is just the speed, because they come out blazing fast. Oh gosh, I thought you were going to Now Beat's saying to go ahead, but I'm going to ignore him. Maybe you should have listened, because uh, you're, you're in Mega Man's hell right now with all these spikes. <laughs> like... To be fair, I'm pretty sure back in that screen, if you open up a Navi mode rather than following Beat, you do get a transmission from Kalinka saying to see if the path down has anything. And then that takes you back to the start of the Stingray area. So what we just got is the wire adapter, which is a nice little uh, bonus equipment. Which gives us a little grappling hook. Yeah, this is 100% optional. This is not needed to beat the game. Not needed, but dang is that handy. So... Oh yeah. Basically, if you think of Mega Man 1 having the magnet beam, and Mega Man 5 and 6 having the beat letters, Mega Man 4 has two different additional adapters. And the wire adapter is one of them. What yeah, out of the two, I, I kind of think the fire adapter has a little more use. Also, it just looks really cool. Mainly because of how many ceilings you run into. Oh, absolutely. And it just looks cool, so I thoroughly enjoy using it. What does the wire adapter do? Just grabs the ceiling? Grapples onto ceilings, which is really nice. Especially if, say, you don't have enough rush coil energy, you need to get onto a ceiling, you need a bit of vantage point to hit enemies. Because when you grapple onto ceilings, you can actually still shoot from them, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you hang on the ceiling until you decide to fall off. So you can actually use that as a way to avoid some enemies too. Mm. Speaking of avoiding enemies, using Rush Marine for Dive Man stage, especially with all of these bombs here, really good move. Oh, uh, yeah. Because it helps to dodge everything so much more. I mean, that's what that power-up is used for, so you might as well get full access of it now before you lose all your water. Absolutely. Now, with Dive Man, I find the most important thing to do, don't use his weakness. Keep firing at him and watch his mouth. If he opens his mouth, he's going to shoot a torpedo. If his mouth is closed, he's going to dash it. Basically, you just keep firing and watch what his mouth does. Yeah, because luckily, no matter what attack he does, he does do a little squat right before it, too. So you just have to pay attention to the mouth to see which version he's doing. I wonder how many squats he does a day. <laughs> he's the squat master. He's like, oh, right. <laughs> he's squat God. Dive man is the squat master. I hate that. Going for that one achievement in Ring Fit. He just wants to be the squat master. <laughs> Played, sir. Well played, sir. Well played, sir. Hey, man, quit being puke green. I know, I know it's really sickening, but... Just because the stage is green doesn't mean you have to be Mega Man. Why you do this? And we got the dive missile. Which is a, actually a pretty handy weapon. You know, it's one letter away just for being dive missile, which is also accurate. Dive missile. There's been a lot of death in this part, huh? He did uh, have to fight a dead man. 